Hello everyone and welcome to the next Orca lesson. This lesson is the second lesson about ecosystem engineers and in this video we will be explaining how whales are ecosystem engineers. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. So we already know from the first lesson that an ecosystem engineer is a plant or animal that creates, changes or destroys a habitat and that they change the availability of resources, for example food, to other species other than themselves by causing these changes in the ecosystem. Whales are very, very important because they are ecosystem engineers. But before we carry on, we just need to briefly look into the past. Over hundreds of years, whales have unfortunately been hunted. The whaling industry began in the 11th century when the Basque whalers from France and Spain started hunting and trading the products from the northern right whales, which are now unfortunately one of the most endangered of the great whales. They were followed first by the Dutch and the British and later by the Americans, Norwegians and many other nations. The UK, along with many other countries, stopped commercial whaling in the mid 20th century. But it wasn't just right whales that were hunted, but many other species of whales such as the humpback whale, blue whale, fin whale and minke whale were also hunted and killed. Whales were hunted for their oil, which was used for machinery oil, cooking, soap and lighting. Whale baleen was used for corsets, fishing rods and hoops in women's skirts, and the meat was also eaten. An estimated 2.9 million whales were killed during the 20th century, leaving global whale populations destroyed. In 1986, the International Whaling Commission banned commercial whaling because of the extreme depletion of most of the whale stocks around the world and due to concerns over animal welfare. The decline in great whale numbers has likely altered the structure and function of our oceans. Up to 90% of the world's whale populations was hunted. This means that only 10% of the original world's whale populations were left in our oceans. Unfortunately, some countries do still whale today, for example, Norway. For a long time, whales have been considered too rare to make much of a difference to the oceans, but that is very wrong. In more positive news, some species of whales are coming back from the brink of extinction. For example, humpback whale numbers have increased and we are now starting to see humpback whales in waters where we haven't seen them in over 200 years and this is such fantastic news. It's only until now where we can see some whale numbers increasing that we can really see the huge positive impact that these large whales have on our oceans and our world overall. Although all species of cetacean, remember that word meaning whales, dolphins and porpoises, are important in our ocean ecosystem, mainly because they are at the top of the food chain, so they have an impact on all creatures in that food chain, it is the large baleen whales, such as the blue whale, humpback whale, fin whale, and also the largest toothed whale, the sperm whale, that are considered the most important ecosystem engineers in the ocean. As we already know, an animal or plant can be an ecosystem engineer through feeding habits, migration patterns and or other behaviours that result in changes. So let's have a look at how whales are ecosystem engineers. Firstly, let's look at feeding habits. And one of the main impacts that whales have on the whole ecosystem is actually through their poo. Firstly, whales spread nutrients through the water column. So they dive throughout the sunlight zone to feed at varying depths on krill or other small fish. However, whales can't poo under the pressure of water at depths, so they have to poo at the surface and their poo also floats. So these massive clouds of whale poo provide a huge boost of essential nutrients, mainly iron and nitrogen, 
for plankton at the water's surface, directly benefiting many ecosystems and the whole marine food chain. Whale poo is actually orange due to the high amount of iron in the krill that they eat. The poo is kind of fluffy looking, but it might also contain undigested hard squid beaks, especially in sperm whale poo. So naturally, nutrients at the surface sink downwards, but whales reverse this flow to get nutrients back up to the surface, and this is called a whale pump. But why is whale poo so important for phytoplankton? Well, phytoplankton use these nutrients, especially the iron, plus sunlight and carbon dioxide for their photosynthesis. So they use this to grow. The byproduct of this photosynthesis is oxygen. Although they may be small, this phytoplankton in the world's oceans produces an incredible 50% of the world's oxygen. Which gives you oxygen to breathe. So this is very important for us humans. Whales can also help to combat climate change. When phytoplankton is not eaten by a predator in its lifetime, it sinks to the depths of the sea. And this phytoplankton stores carbon dioxide because it uses carbon dioxide through its photosynthesis process. And phytoplankton stores two billion tonnes of carbon dioxide every year. Did you know that phytoplankton captures 40% of the world's carbon dioxide? That's the same as the amount captured by 1.7 trillion trees or four Amazon rainforests worth. And also when a whale dies, they then sink to the bottom of the ocean, locking the carbon away for hundreds of years. And we'll talk a bit more about whale carcasses a bit later on. So this carbon capture is really important because it means that the carbon dioxide does not get released into our atmosphere where it contributes to global warming. So you might already know that trees are very important because trees also use photosynthesis to produce their own energy and through this, just like the phytoplankton, they use carbon dioxide. So a tree absorbs up to 22 kilograms of carbon dioxide a year, but a whale accumulates 1,800 kilograms of carbon dioxide a year, and this gets stored on the ocean floor when the whales die. The whales also help themselves during this whole whale pump process. So we have a humpback whale here, which releases poo when it comes up to the surface, which gets used by phytoplankton in the photosynthesis process. And these phytoplankton then get eaten by zooplankton and other small animals such as krill, which the whales then eat themselves. So it really is a huge cycle. And this also supports the whole ocean ecosystem. And although it was thought for a long time that whales were competition for fishermen, as they thought that they ate all the food, and although they do eat a lot of fish, we now know that through whales supporting the whole food chain, they actually increase the amount of fish available for other animals in the sea and for fishermen, especially in areas where whales congregate in large numbers, like in feeding and breeding grounds. These large baleen whales and the large toothed whale, for example the sperm whale, have the biggest impact on the ocean because they are simply so large and therefore they eat so much so they poo a lot. So the impact they have on the ocean ecosystem is huge. However, it's not just the large whales. A study conducted in the southwest Atlantic Ocean revealed the poo and sick of spinner dolphins formed part of the diet of 12 different species of reef fish. The most prolific consumer of the spinner dolphin poo and sick was the black triggerfish. And this species of fish 
could even read the body language of the spinner dolphin and tell when the dolphin was about to poo. So they were able to position themselves for the most effective feeding. Whales themselves are also an important prey source to the orcas. So although orcas hunting on whales is a sad and gruesome sight, they do provide an important food source for this large species of dolphin as well. We know that whales transport nutrients vertically from nutrient rich deeper waters to shallower surface waters via their poo called the whale pump. But they also move nutrients laterally in moving them between feeding and breeding grounds. We already know that whales migrate thousands of miles between their feeding and breeding grounds every year. Think of all the nutrients that the whales take with them and release on the way. So they can take nutrients from nutrient rich feeding grounds in high latitudes to less productive waters in low latitudes. What else do you think makes a whale an ecosystem engineer? Even when whales are dead, they provide a huge benefit to many more creatures. As we already know, the ocean's depths are supplied by nutrients falling down from the surface waters called marine snow. When a whale dies, it might float for a while on the surface of the water as it fills with gases as it decomposes. And on the surface, you might see species of gulls pecking at the whale and also species of shark eating chunks of the whale as it floats. But eventually, this ocean giant will begin to sink, falling kilometres and kilometres down into the depths of the ocean until finally coming to rest on the seabed. And when the dead whale settles on the bottom of the seafloor, it creates its huge own ecosystem. On the seafloor, this dead whale can supply food to so many organisms for decades. It creates a bonanza of food for creatures from tiny microscopic bacteria to large scavengers. Species of worms, sea snails, sharks, crab, lobsters, to name a few, feast on this bonanza, and if this is just one whale. Through different stages of decomposition, different animals will eat different parts of the whale. For example, in the early stages, large scavengers like sleeper sharks will eat the blubber and the skin. Worms, sea snails, bristle worms and shrimps will pick off any remaining scraps of blubber and mussel. And a single whale can provide food for these scavengers for up to two years. And when these scavengers have finished eating on the whale, and the whale is just left as a skeleton really, it's still a very, very important food source. Species such as the zombie worm will break down and eat the bones. And these small worms and other bits of bacteria and other small scavengers can spend as long as 10 years harvesting the remains of a whale. So some species of fish only feed on dead whales, they don't feed on anything else, and hundreds of species rely on whale falls for food. And scientists also think that the earliest human-caused extinctions in the sea may have been invertebrates that fed on whale fall. And these species would have disappeared before humans discovered them. It's really fascinating stuff. Whales also provide homes for other animals to live on. Did you know there's a species of barnacle which only lives on humpback whales? And that's called the Corula diadema? Whales also have other species of barnacles and even whale lice living on them. And as the whale swims along, these barnacles filter feed on tiny bits of phytoplankton floating past them in the water as the whale swims along. So it's a fantastic home for these animals. Okay, so to recap, we know that whales are very important because they are ecosystem engineers. They can help provide oxygen for us to breathe, they combat climate change, and they contribute to an overall healthy ocean food chain. 
Even when a whale is dead, it can provide food for hundreds of different species of fish and invertebrates for decades. Whales also provide a home for whale lice and barnacles. So the bottom line is, without whales, many other species in our oceans would not be able to exist. So it's really, really important for us to protect and conserve these amazing whales, as well as dolphins and porpoises, for the future. So thank you so much for listening to another Orca lesson. If you want to find out more about the work of Orca, please do visit our website. It's www.orcaweb.org.uk. If you have enjoyed these lessons and you're able to make a donation to help us support our amazing conservation work, all details can be found on our website. Thank you.